sick leaderships in the past 30 years for their efforts. I don't think there's enough of that being done because for this new generation, can we fix the feedback please? For this new gener generation to be standing here today, it wouldn't have been possible without their efforts for the last 30 years. Thinking back 29 years, uh, I remember sitting in the Sangha at the Yuba City Nagakit then. In front of me was Dr. Alec. At the time, he had the crowd raise their hand and state that if you want Khalistan, oh, sorry, if you want Khalistan, raise your hand. This was actually my first encounter 29 years ago or so uh, with this entire movement for uh, Sikh Homeland. Today, 29 years later, that, that statement does not hold ground. And I'm actually very proud of that because if we look at the history of the last four years, we have thousands of Sikhs who rose up for Sikh sovereignty in the past, past few years, primarily the youth, uh, through protests, marches, social media campaigns, and petitions. So my statement to all of you is that don't forget, but let us for one minute just put aside the remembrance of 30 years and think about the next 30 years where we will be on based on how we are today as a people, as a community, how our thinking is. So I'm going to touch into that a little. So if we really think about it, 30 years of rallies, seminars, and candlelight vigils are good to keep any momentum going for, of any movement, and we've done an excellent job of that, there's no doubt, but they do not result in homelands for a people who refuse to distance themselves from the mental grip of their oppressor. So in the next 30 years, if we truly believe in a sick homeland, and you plan to see at least a glimpse of it, if you, or, or before you die, you need to start a movement in just, not just in our community's uh, mobility in a material sense, but in our own daily lifestyles, which help us build a distance from our oppressor, which clearly defines to our new generation and future generations that we are not Indian. You have to learn to define that to your own kids, that we are not Indian. Because without understanding that you are not Indian, how, are, how do you claim to be a, a person of a separate uh, nation? The distance from the state doesn't mean physical distance. It, it, also limit, it is also limiting the mental grip of the state has on us as a community. Without the mental distance, we cannot be free physically from the oppressor to whom we are subconsciously loyal. I'll give you an example. When we go to these big box stores, Walmart, Kohl's, Macy's, which do business in India, we ignore the fact that the goods we purchase with, with our hard earned money are actually made in India. We, I, I know and I have seen many of our own people that are actually happy to buy something with, uh, with an Indian made label on it. And, and it doesn't even make any logical sense if you compare that to the uh, history of the Jewish community and their genocide. Uh, there's no way they were supporting the German system th at that time. But yeah, we continue to 30 years later support the Indian system, one way or another. Uh, I, I know people that are happy to go to India and invest during the, uh, and invest their hard-earned money in that country. But yet, in the month of June and November, somehow they remember there was a genocide. You cannot want an independent state and still be willing to fund their system or economic system from 10,000 miles away. The reason we do this is simply we, we still have a slave mindset which works in our subconscious to better the master, the master in this be, situation being the Indian state. Think about what I'm saying. The, the, I'll, I'll go into media. The, me, the purpose of media from a government viewpoint is to social engineer, divide, control, and control the masses. This includes America, United Kingdom, Canada, China, India. It's basically the same idea across the board. I am very confident at least 70% of the six in front of me have ZTV, Sony TV, Star Plus, and other Indian-based propaganda tools to tell your daughters and sons to not accept turbans and beers, to sell your 
showed around the acceptance of the majority culture is clothing, fashions, uh, what to read, what to watch, how to speak, uh, how to develop their, their uh, slang languages. Uh, you're willing to, I mean, if you really think about what I'm saying here, you're willing to pay on top of your cable bill for this anti sick and indigenous culture propaganda machine and bring it into your own homes. Turn off the Indian media. Its sole purpose is to social engineer you to want to be them and not yourself, to hate who they are, to love who, uh, to hate you who you are, to love who they are, to be ashamed to speak your language in public, but feel good about speaking theirs, to put your bond down and pick up a charu. Look about a month ago what was happening in Punjab. It is not possible to actually achieve your own when you're praising theirs. It just doesn't make any sense. When we go to Punjab, we tell everybody we're going to India. When we end, when the end destination actually is Punjab, then stopping in Delhi for less than one, one day is no different than stopping for one hour in Tokyo or Singapore, yet we tell everybody we go to India. When someone asks our, us our original national origin, we refer to India, yet we plaster, now listen to what I'm saying real carefully here, we plaster the images of Shahids who fought for Khalistan on our Facebook pages and our Gurdwara Langar halls, but we tell everybody that our origin is Indian. It makes no, or our na original national origin is Indian. It makes no logical sense. Do you think some of the other communities that have gone through genocides actually tell their own people or, or, or whoever asks uh, that they belong to that same national origin that kills them? It's, it doesn't make any sense. You, you really have to understand that this is the mental grip that we have on, our, on us from the, the, the Indian culture, the, the, uh, the Brahminical practices of India, the, the caste system is there as well practiced, two women were just hung, that, all that is seeped in our minds and our subconscious still. And we have to eliminate it if we truly want our own homeland. Um, you, you really have to understand the long-term plan here. They have with us, like, with us this hate-love relationship, a relationship where they need us, yet they don't want us. They hate our philosophy of equality. They need us to hold on to it. They hate who we are, but they have to tolerate us. Uh, to ultimate, the ultimate goal of the, is to uh, domesticate us like a dog that barks and has a bite who is mentally controlled and loyal to its owner, who is happy to see its owner, who is who waits on meals to be fed by its owner, who rewards it, uh, who is rewarded for the tricks it does on the command of its owner. This is the expectation of Sikhs and other indigenous communities in India. Dalits make up four percent of the world population and are basically all put into this category and we are basically in the same category. You have to understand that. Uh, unless there is no change, there is a change within our own thinking and a solid focus on Sikh homeland in the next generation through strong scholarly academic development, my generation's offsprings will forget and will go through another genocide as history will repeat itself and their kids will once again be standing where I am. The groundwork is set in India with Modi and the rise of Hindutva. It is time to take action now and time to define our own selves on our own terms in our own homeland with our own education system, our own economy, our own military, our own right to live as who we are. Thank you.